You're watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. Stan Kimmer, the first openly gay president of the North Carolina Council of Churches, is joining us as our guest this morning. Stan, um, recent revelations about bullying of GLBT youngsters and the suicides has been making headlines. Talk a little, uh, talk a little uh, about that. I think it's uh, something that's very, very tragic, and I think it's something that everyone, every leader in our country should care about. You know, we, we really should be... This is not new, know, though. It's right. just it, uh, uh, GLBT people, youngsters, have... Uh, this has been an issue for, for, for years and years and years. Uh, it's just coming to light now. But in, and it's good it's coming to light. It really needs to be addressed. Why would we want to demonize or treat any segment of our society poorly? You know, as, as a country, as an economic entity, we would want each person to be valued, to be able to progress in the education system, get good schooling, contribute to society. You know, it's wrong to take any group of people and push them around and treat them less than. And uh, I think it's about time that this issue about uh, gay bullying has come out in the forefront and that we're actually talking about it and starting to do something about it. What are some of the things uh that you'd like to accomplish as president of the uh, North Carolina Council ah. of Churches? Uh, one thing I'd like to do is see a, uh, awareness raised about the North Carolina Council of Churches. You know, we have a good core group of leaders. A lot of the denominational leaders know who we are. But we really want to get the word out across the entire state, you know, from, the, from Asheville to Wilmington, and that the people in the co those 1.5 million congregants you know, nor, know more about us and the work that we do. We really do need to get you know, more people involved. We want to have more activities across the state locally so that people can, can get on board with our issues and do projects with the council. What issues are, is the council uh, active in, 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 has it on their agenda? Well, one of the ones that uh, last, uh, a new project over the last year is a, rolling out a health and wholeness initiative to congregations. It's one thing to pass you know, universal health care, which is good, but we also need to encourage each church member the things that they can do in their congregation to have a healthier life, exercising, eating the right foods. And we have a program that's available to every congregation to help their people live a more healthy lifestyle. And this is uh, on the agenda of the, of the council? Oh, yes. We have that program uh, very active right now. It's rolling out. A lot of material is going out you know, to our members and to our congregations to engage them uh, with the issue of, of taking care of themselves. And, and getting back to the GLBT issue, uh, you say your election was not a referendum on, the, on, on that lifestyle, uh, but do you still feel in some way a representative of that community? Oh. And do you think how you conduct yourself will be a reflection? Yeah, absolutely. To, to the public? Uh, I really do. You know, I know I'm going to have you know, the, 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 the microscope on me. And uh, you know, I want to be a really good representative of the GLBT community. I want to do, you know, be a very strong leader for two years. I really do hope that two years from now people can say, you know, he was one of the best presidents, and we have no regrets about electing him. So, so you're comfortable with the with the microscope? Yes, yes. On you. And in fact, you know, I, I timed it this way so I could uh, be retired and have a little bit more time, you know, to spend being a good president. Do you think that uh, your election might fuel some suspicions that the North Carolina Council of Churches has a so-called gay agenda? I think there are some segments that might have those suspicions, but I think when they really look at you know, how I'm going to conduct myself in the office and how I'm going to lead on all these issues that are you know, non-GLBT specific, you know, I think that'll quickly go away. A big part of the same-sex marriage debate is the religious side of the equation. Yep. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, personally, you know, of course, I'd like to see gay marriage. But, you know, as president of the council, uh, I support our neutral position, which basically says that we should not fully support it, but we also should not support an anti-gay constitutional amendment. We should leave it open because lots of churches are still studying the issue. And it's a very hard issue. It's a very painful issue. And I think we need to provide that safe and open space for churches to continue to study and reach their conclusions on how they want to treat gay marriage. Do you think the whole cultural issue surrounding gays or the GLBT community is different in North Carolina than in other geographic places in the country? Actually, it might be a little bit tougher, a little bit more you know, conservative here. 
But you know, North Carolina, I, I consider part of the New South. I think we're pretty much right in there with the rest of the country. Uh, and a, a lot of folks compare the struggle for, quote, gay rights uh, mm -hmm. to the civil rights movement in, in, in America. What's your take on that? I think that's a very fair comparison. I think any group, you know, any group that has, you know, laws that are written against them, any group that's not treated equally, any group that can be, you know, prejudiced against, uh, I think that any group that needs to fight for those basic rights, you know, should consider themselves a civil right movement. Do you think the, the GLBT community is, is hungry for mainstream role models and, and mainstream leadership? I would say yes. Uh, and I think that they would like to see, you know, more GLBT people reach mainstream leadership, but also, you know, have a lot of straight people who, you know, treat GLBT people kind of uh, matter-of-factly, that, uh, you know, you're just one of us, you're one of the community, and to treat us on an equal footing with everybody and have leaders that, that look at us that do you, way. Do you consider yourself a role model? I do. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's kind of a, a hard title to take on, and I don't want to be presumptuous. But I think that, you know, being in this You're position, You're in a leadership right. position. It's a, it's, a, it's a big organization, 6,000 church congregations, a million and a half people. You're leading that group. That, I would call that a leadership position. They might never want to be presumptuous and say, you know, <laughs> hold myself up and, you know, as anything special. But, you know, I do want to, you know, be a good example. I do want to be an inspiration. I do want to, you know, help other people in this role. And... Uh, you know, I don't want to focus too much, you know, on, on me or my agenda. I want to, you know, spend more time making sure that, you know, the work that I do is effective and that the, the council you know, moves forward and grows. You, and you said you're, you head up a, a consulting firm now. Right. Uh, I just started a, a small consulting practice. Total uh, engagement consulting. Right. And by the way, we'll, we'll, we'll flip that uh, website up there so folks can check it out. Tell us briefly about that. Uh, basically, I want to offer three services. I can offer overall diversity management, diversity strategy for companies and nonprofits. It can be overall diversity or a focus on GLBT. I also have done a lot of skills in IBM around uh, career development and career management. And also, just anybody who needs a general project manager or consulting around organizational efficiency. Last July, you went to Kenya. Yes. Tell our viewers what happened on that trip. Actually, it was a, a vacation trip, but three days of it, part of the group had the option of breaking off to work on a community project. And we were in Matito Ande, which is a very poor community. Was that community. a province? In uh, Matito Ande is a, is a town okay. uh, of the Kamba tribe. And uh, we joined the work project, and I really saw that they were desperately poor, very high HIV infection rate, yet they were warm, they were welcoming, they wanted to better themselves. And when I stayed there for the three days with the project, you know, I was kind of offered the opportunity to make a big difference. And what did you do? I uh, actually uh, provide the seed funding to start a vocational school in Matito Ande because they are so economically disadvantaged. Uh, you know, widows have no jobs. They end up being prostitutes and, and, and contracting HIV. And I wanted to provide a way where they can learn skills and become so more economically this, viable. This, this school did not exist? Right. And it's called the Akimmer Kamba? Yes. Vocational School. Right. And they're teaching what? Uh, well, it's not, it's the, uh, it's, it's, since I just funded it uh, six months ago, uh, it's still at the so, early stages. So they've, it's not up and running. Right. Yet. They've, uh, you know, they built the foundation. They got some of the, the water uh, pipes and stuff running. Uh, there's going to be this a an architect who is donating time who's going to go there next month to Kenya and actually do a design of the center that's going to be consistent with the, the en environmental surroundings. And then I hope to return in July or August and they should be well underway. So have you formed a nonprofit to, 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 to raise money for, for the funding of this? Actually, effort? actually, I'm working through a nonprofit called Global Roots. They're a very small nonprofit. That's the group that I traveled with. And so, you know, they have a website, and they're overseeing the project. And so, how I'm much? How much you got to raise? Well, they're probably going to need, you know, I st we started with uh, twenty thousand dollars, which can do a lot more in Africa than it can do in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, they're probably going to need, you know, probably tens, a couple tens and tens of thousands, you know, to complete the project. So, uh, I am going to be giving five percent of my billings to the project, and hopefully, people will see my website and be encouraged to to give to it. Um, 
so folks can go, is there a way folks can give to this effort? Uh, they go to, to that website? Actually, yes, they can go to Global Roots and... Uh, dot com? That's right, go, go, dot, dot org. Dot Global org. Roots dot org. And uh, if they want to, it has the information on uh, where to send uh, donations, and they can just specify it for the uh, Kimmer Kamba Center, or they can just say the Kenya Vocational School. When are you going back to Africa? I hope to go the end of July or early August. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you very much. It was really Thanks great being us. here. Great to meet you. Thank you. Next week, we'll get a rare look inside the Wilmington Star News, a conversation with publisher Robert Gruber here on Byline. Next week, I'm Don Ansel. Have a great week. You've been watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Join us every Sunday morning as we explore the issues that concern you.